Uh, my name is Ed Malloy, and I am one of the co-founders and board directors for Philam Creative. I want to thank you for coming out to our panel today, which was produced by one of our members, Edwin Santos. We'll bring him out later to give him a round of applause. Before we get started, we just wanted to say a couple of things about our organization. We're an organization that's committed to the advancement and the support of Filipino Americans and Asian Americans in entertainment. We hope that you'll join us. If you'd like to sign up for our newsletter and find out about our events, you can find out about it by emailing us at philamcreative at gmail.com. That's philamcreative at gmail.com. There's going to be more information outside with Walter or Edwin. We also wanted to share with you that we are launching two new channels, uh, the Philam Creative channel and the video channel. And very soon, within the next two weeks, we'll be putting out a notice for where we're going to be looking for actors and writers and crew to start our production. We've been in a lot of uh, meetings so far and we're ready to start launching things. So please be on the lookout for that. We're looking for all kinds of actors and people behind the camera to help us with that. We have two YouTube channels, so we hope you'll join us for that. You'll probably need a good casting director too, right? I think so. <laughs> I think this panel's perfect for that. So once again, if you want to uh, learn all about our stuff, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything is at Philam Creative. So without further ado, we want to introduce you to this Hollywood Actors panel. We welcome everyone for coming. I want to introduce our four uh, panelists at this time. Our first panelist is currently on uh, the Disney Channel's Girl Meets World. You might have also seen her on Showtime on Weeds or on CBS on The Good Wife. Our actress on this panel today is Tess Paras. Let's give her a round of applause. Our second panelist is, uh, he teaches long form improv at the Upright Citizens Brigade. He's also an actor and comedian. We want to welcome Eugene Cordero. <laughs> right next to me here is a three time nominee for the Seymour Heller Award for Commercial Agent of the Year. We're very happy to have our talent agent here today, uh, Janet Cha. Finally, our uh, impromptu opening act for the day. He's a friend of Philam Creative. This is his second event for us. He's a three-time nominee for Best Casting for an Independent Film. A friend of FAG, we hope you'll read his new book that's coming out soon called An Actor Grovels. It's available now. Oh, it is available. At anactorgrovels.com. Excellent. Please welcome Billy DeMotta. DeMotta. Demoda. Don't shoot me, sorry. Um, I'm just going to ask some questions here, uh, three general questions, and we're going to get into more specific questions. And at the end, we want to invite everyone to participate as well. I know many of you have turned in some questions, so we, we thank you for that. Um, if we could just start at the end with Tess, uh, can we just let everyone know who isn't familiar already, just how each of you got started in the business? Ooh. Um. I st I'm from Southern California. I started kind of in the business a little early and then took a break to get a degree. <laughs> um, so I was doing stuff at uh, when I was a kid doing commercials and commercial print here in SoCal and then went to NYU and started doing a lot of musical theater and did some time touring and also various regional theater and stuff. And then I started doing more and more television and studying at UCB New York. And then I moved out here. It'll be my five-year LA anniversary in January. So um, yeah, theater, and then learning comedy, and then coming back out here and doing more film and television since I've been in LA. That was general. Yeah. Uh, I started, uh, you know, by doing shows, plays, and stuff in high school, uh, and then went to college at Marymount Manhattan College in New York to study acting and theater. Um, and then from there, while I was in college, the Upright Citizens Brigade, they started uh, their theater in New York around that time, and I started uh, when they started with them. So it's been a good, like, 15 years with those guys. Uh, and I was, so I was out there uh, until 2009, moved out here to L.A., uh, and their theater out here, too, is still part of it, and perform regularly there. So mostly comedy. I mean, the reason I got into acting is because my sister was amazing at sports. <laughs> uh, so I had to do something that my family could see me as different. Uh, that was the thing that they wanted me to do a little bit more. And they wanted me to sing more, they said. Yeah, they did. 
they still do poetry. Yeah. They're like, sing why more. Are you sing more. more. Okay. <laughs> so that was a thing that I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to say, uh, "Can you sing tenor?" Very Ten or eleven blocks from here. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. That's how nice. Bad. I'm not a great singer, <laughs> although I do sing background in a baby. So. Uh, I started. I grew up in San Francisco uh, in, in the, the last millennium, uh, uh, basically playing rock and roll. Uh, in the '60s and the '70s, I played in a lot of rock and roll bands, and I came to Los Angeles in the mid '70s to be a guitar god. And uh, disco happened. <laughs> kind, of screwed, kind of screwed me all up. So I got into the retail business. You know, actors wait tables when they're not working and musicians sell things. So I got into the retail business and I became very successful. And for about 10 or 15 years I did that until I couldn't take it anymore. I was working at Beverly Hills Porsche Audi in 1984 as a new car sales manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, all my friends were singing and dancing and, and playing music and I wasn't doing anything related to my art anymore. Um, I was selling cars to Playboy Bunnies, mm -hmm. and uh, and so uh, which wasn't terrible, but uh, and I was making a lot of money. But you know, we all know that it doesn't make any difference how much money you make if you're not happy with what you're doing. So I, a friend of mine was casting movies, and I said to her, "How do you do that? I like movies, and I like this is 1984, and I like people. I can put them together." She said, "Okay, come work for me, for free." So I did. Uh, I wound up interning with her for about six months, and then I went on went on to work with her as her uh, assistant on um, Predator, The Running Man Commando. I did all the Arnold movies, Three Amigos, Project X, uh, uh, Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, a, a ton of uh, weird science, a lot of sort of mid sixties, uh, mid eighties kids movies, uh, coming of age movies, uh, and then in nineteen eighty eight. I went out on my own and I started with a movie called Colors and then I did, uh, it was the gang m movie with Sean Penn and Robert Duvall and I did Above the Law with Steven Seagal and I've cast 100 movies and TV shows, worked on America's Most Wanted for 20 years. Uh, and, uh, and now I'm playing rock and roll again, so come see the band. What's it called? Uh, it's called Shelley O'Neill and The Big Way. Um, I actually am a native Los Angeles person, I'm an you know, and um, I grew up around the business, but you know, not so much. I wasn't, you know, I did the school plays, I figure skated, I guess that was my way of performing. Um, and then I went to school in Boston to Emerson College, it's like a pretty um, sort of media oriented school, film school. And I came back and um, I wanted to work in media, I wasn't quite sure what exactly I wanted to do, but um, I ended up working at a bigger talent to see the mail room just to get in. And I got sucked right up into the commercial business. So here I am like 12 years later. So that's what happened to me. <laughs> what is the best and the hardier job? Uh, the best part of being an actor is working. <laughs> uh, and the worst part is hearing that you didn't get it. Uh, so, uh, and that's it. I mean, it's, it seems so easily said, but dealing with that on a regular basis for both is, you know, you kind of have to see because, you know, you never know. Um, so hearing no sucks the worst, um, and hearing yes is the best thing in the world. And to add to that, when you, um, I feel like it's also a very welcoming and fun set, a place where you feel comfortable doing your thing and bringing your full self to the table because I've also had experiences where you ne don't necessarily feel like you're bringing your full self to the table and that's not what you were hired for. You were hired to be a look or something like that. So that doesn't feel great, even though you're working and then the paycheck helps. <laughs> so there's that, but that's also your job is to just fill the need of whatever story they're telling that day, whether it be a commercial or whether you're working on a feature or something like that. You're hired as an actor to, to do your job and help them tell the story, so that's an important thing. Um, and, and the hard part, when you hear those no's, is designing your life so you don't feel like it's contingent, your happiness isn't contingent on hearing a yes. Because there's so much of, there's so many opportunities that are going to come and you also have to like know that that's going to come and do your work and and and
commit to having a good life around that. So that way you're not super bummed. I mean, you're going to give yourself a day to be pissed off or sad or whatever, but then you're just going to pick yourself right back up and do it. So it, it, that's the hardest part is learning whatever that means to you because it's going to be different on everybody, whatever you, you need to feel good in pursuing this creative life. I mean, I have to agree with that. For me as an agent, uh, the best part of my job is telling clients they booked a job and they get to work and make money. And um, I want to say the worst part. I mean, it happens all the time. It's just part of you know being an actor. You're not going to get every single job you go out on. But you know, there's little successes every day. I mean, just getting an audition, you know, is a little success. And getting a call back or you know being put on a bill for a job, you know, those are all good things. But obviously, the, my favorite part of my business is booking talent and helping actors, you know, support themselves and get health insurance and, you know, <laughs> work toward their, you know, like their bigger picture of, you know, what they want to do. Um, but yeah, but you kind of have to, you know, just take it in as a process and um, just every little thing counts. So, yeah. Well, uh, to all three of you, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, the, it's tough for me to, to, to not hire the actors that are so great, that I really love, but, you know, not everybody can get the job. So it's the thing where, and I try to, to let actors know this every time that the, uh, the decision process comes around. And it, sometimes it, you know, they get it, but it still hurts, is that you can only do the best you can do. And if they didn't hire you, it's not because you weren't good or you weren't or you weren't you know worthy or you didn't have value or that your work wasn't great or you didn't do amazing work as an actor in prepping for the job and sometimes you may have even done more and better than the guy who gets the job uh, but you know you can't kill yourself every time you don't get a job because it's just another you know they say that you know uh, Babe Ruth struck out more than any other batter because he hit more home runs than any other batter. Or, or because he struck out, he hit more. But you got to get up and you got to swing. And every single time you go out and you audition, <clears throat> that's swinging. Um, the best part of my job is, uh, is when I can, um, is, is when I start a new project and I meet a new family. And I know we talked about, about it before, but I'm enriched by every actor that I meet and every story that I hear and every. Uh, Every, every heart that, uh, that, that, that opens up to me in my office, uh, our office, uh, is, a, is another thing that makes me a better casting director. So I love meeting actors. I have done it for 31 years. I've met tens of thousands of actors in any and every venue I can, acting classes, graduating showcases, every theater uh, in this town. And, um, and that's the best part of my job, is, is, is Increasing my circle of influence and and uh, connecting with more artists uh, every day. So, working with a lot of actors, uh, you know, Film Creative has a lot of actor friends, and we're always listening to their stories of how they prepare. Obviously, an audition is the biggest part of what they do, or a big part of what they do. Um, what's what's easy, practical experience? And I think I think we'll have different answers for this. You might have to think a little bit here, but what is, what is practical experience that an actor can get that they're not necessarily thinking about? I mean, we know that a lot of times actors will try and take uh, acting classes, they'll take a comedy class. What's something practical that you might advise an actor, or maybe in hindsight, that, that an actor isn't necessarily thinking about when they're trying to improve their craft? Um, for me, and, you know, improv, I mean, obviously acting and you know, acting classes and commercial workshops and any acting classes, but um, improv is always a good way to go, um, just to kind of keep your skills going, and um, that's just the way a lot of the cast is going these days, so i say improv is really important. Um, just auditioning for, you know, just taking the audition process and just learning from that. Every audition is a lesson. It's another connection to a casting director. Even if you don't get the job, you make it all the way to callbacks. That director, you know, might cast yourself something else. So um, that's always something to think about and not just, you know, oh, I didn't get that job. It's always about the bigger picture and making fans every step of the way. 
uh, I think actors need to live their lives uh, as a part of their art. And by that I mean that, that sometimes I think they get so uh, um, sort of, uh, you know, focused on their career that they forget about the life outside their career. Their physical, uh, the activities that they do, the relationships they develop, the, uh, the, the, the places they travel, all of those things that you do as a human being make you a better actor. They make you a more informed human being that makes you uh, a person that when you walk in and you do your, you do your work as an actor and you, and you prepare your audition and you, and you go in there, you're, you're, uh, you're informed by the world around you. I think what happens is, is a lot of times actors, they, they become so blind, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, anyway, overly focused on getting that job instead of understanding that the world out there is going to help them become a better human being and a better artist. So, so don't shut the world out. Don't become so obsessed with your, your, uh, your job as an actor that you forget about your job as a human being. Tunnel vision. Tunnel vision, that's what, I was <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, well, of course I'm going to say improv is great. <laughs> um, I agree, Mark. Uh Yeah, and I think that's great, but I think what that does as a whole for most actors is gets them to live their life again. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, they kind of take care of each other. I would say that the biggest practical advice I have for other actors is, um, even though my answer to the last question was the best and the worst, is that even though that's the best and the worst things, the best thing is hearing yes, the worst thing is hearing no, it's fine either way though. Like, I'm not stressed about it. Um, because that's part of my job, I chose this as a life. Uh, so, hearing no is the worst part of the job, but it's not the worst thing in my life. So I'm good. Um, uh, so, uh, a big thing that I would say for other actors is, uh, because of that, like, take your work seriously. Go do your homework so that you're ready for that audition, but don't take yourself seriously. Yeah, you're an actor. Yeah, you decided to be an actor. It's crazy. You're crazy. You're a crazy human being. So you're not curing cancer. Yeah, you're not curing cancer. You're pretending to be another human being. So it's like take your work seriously because you really want that job. Do all your homework so that you don't go in there and uh, and can't give your best. But then you can't take yourself that seriously. And just to piggyback off that, I met with a potential client a couple weeks ago, and she was so serious that it kind of scared me away. Mm -hmm. I was just like, <laughs> you're kind of getting like a little psycho, you know? She's just like, my job, I just want it. My goal is just book 10, you know, like I, she had like this vision of how many commercials she wanted, but I'm like, I'm not in your way. Like, I want you to book this job. And she literally was just like, I was just like, just heard like, geek. And then they come in and meet me. Yeah. Yeah. What? No. Yeah, just kind of this energy around you. You know, like what Billy said, it's, you know, you kind of have to have, you can't have like this negative, so focused energy around you. You know, you got to kind of, you know, people want to have to gravitate towards you. It's just everything in life, like positive. Right. <laughs> positive, you know, positive energy attracts, you know, positive energy. So, you know, just to piggyback off that, just you just can't. Be so serious about it, you know. Again, you're, yeah. you know, we're not brain surgeons. We're, you know, just trying to act and you know, entertain people. I can do brain surgery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on TV, I'm amazingly good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's one of my skills. Right. My special skill is surgery. fake yeah. brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> just the object work of brain surgery. Oh my god! <laughs> I think that was just cooking in a wok. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was uh, there was one piece of a brain in there, and then <laughs> some like some sugar, noodles. yeah, yeah. sugar snap piece. <laughs> oh man, um, I think I, I will echo what everyone says, uh, but not to get too homeworky about it. I, I have started re recently coaching other actors because that's somehow I fell into that, um, and what I noticed is that a lot of folks need to read a lot of scripts and get familiar with what the script analysis skill, like know what it's telling you, know what that story is telling you. Um, so not, I mean, I know everyone's like, yeah, be chill. But at the, at the same time, work on your craft. Like no scripts, no tone, no, you know, y if you're auditioning for a certain no network, that it's gonna be a different show if it's an FX comedy versus an ABC comedy, that sort of stuff. 
So, I mean, and that's something that I work on constantly, too, is just getting to know the stories and knowing tone. Um, I think that might be a practical skill that folks can, can always benefit from. Uh, I'll piggyback on that Please as do. well. Uh, and this is like a improv note that I like to tell people that is going to be helpful for actors as well, is to be generally knowledgeable. Yep. Um, if and, and and think and think as everybody. So, for instance, if you do not like country music, for you personally, awesome. But listen to country music for like a half hour, mm -hmm. and honestly ask yourself why people love it, and answer that for yourself. So then, if you audition for a part where you have to love country music, it's not foreign to you. Um, so it's like, uh, allow yourself to enjoy everything that you don't normally enjoy, and it also opens yourself up to liking other human beings. Um, <laughs> yeah, if I can pick you back off of that, what it does is it just gives you insight into the way other people think, too. Yeah. You don't like country music? That's okay. But embrace it for a moment to see what it's all about and why other people like it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it's not just the country music. It's the it's enjoying it's it's embracing something that you're not comfortable with because when you do that you recognize how to apply that in every situation as an actor when you walk in it's like I hate the way pineapples taste but I got a lot of love them here so you know so, so, so you, what you have to do is you have to transfer you have to yeah. but that specific is impossible. <laughs> 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 You know what I saw the other day? I saw somebody, it's a, it's a big, it's an Indonesian fruit, a uh, vegetable. No, it's a fruit. It's big and it's got the, what? Jackfruit. Jackfruit. Yeah. Did you see that video? I saw your video, yeah. It's like, <laughs> what the heck is a jackfruit? Where do you buy one? Has anybody ever had jackfruit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't even know what it is, but they That's cut it. That's the it, way it, creative. <laughs> They made jackfruit tacos, they made yeah. jackfruit, uh, you know, oh, yeah, ice cream. Jack, it's like a big Old vegan news. world. Yeah. Yeah. What, where do you get them? Can you find them here? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is ticking We're in the right oh, area. Can. You can't go to Ralph's. Maybe they have them right no. in the right shop. You can go. <laughs> you can go to 99 Ranch. Uh, you can get it. <laughs> you get, yeah. <laughs> what so other food cooking panels question? coming out? Yeah. <laughs> Brains and brains and Watch this. <laughs> That's me cutting a jackfruit. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and jackfruit tastes great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in the last uh, to, uh, last ten years, twenty years, uh, a lot of actors with technology being becoming as inexpensive as it is, with the internet being such a presence. Uh, a couple of our actor friends uh, had for questions, uh, thoughts on self-producing. And uh, since we have uh, you know, an agent, uh, a casting director, an actor, comedian, I think we'll get really varied responses. What are your, or maybe not, what are your thoughts on actors self-producing? I get to work on what I self-produce, yeah. for sure. Like I had, I've had four videos go viral in the past two years. And I have to say, it's really opened up as as far as writing work. And I had no idea that that would propel my career in the direction that it has. Because I feel like, you know, so many people act, like I, I walked into rooms and people were like, oh, you're the typecast girl. You're the girl who wrote that, that musical thing, typecast. Or I just saw your cheeseburger sketch. And I'm like, here are just things that I thought were funny. And there's some sort of recognizability that comes with it. and. Um, and you learn so much from self-producing. You learn how important certain things can be just that you had never thought of, and it just helps you think ahead, and it helps you understand storytelling from so many different uh, directions. So I, I think, you know, yeah, I can't say enough about it. Is It helps you do all the things that we try and do in this career. Create relationships, know your product, know your own brand, it helps you self-generate your own work if you're a writer or any of those things. You learn all parts of it. And in the landscape that we have today, you just can't go without. Um, so I, I'm all for it. I can't advocate enough. 